Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the New Covenant Apostolic Church of Holly, Michigan. Our message today is entitled, No More See. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1, the Bible said this, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In this verse, we read how that the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. John was shown a new heaven and a new earth where there was no more sea. Does the phrase, and there was no more sea, mean that bodies of water do not exist in the new heaven and the new earth? Or does it mean something entirely different? Always remember, it's only after all Scripture has been examined on any particular subject can true Bible doctrine be established. One thing for sure is that this is a condition that does exist in the new heaven and the new earth. Notice what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Did you notice what that scripture said? The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. This is a prophecy about Jesus Christ becoming the Savior of the world. Notice the use of the word sea in this verse to denote people. More specifically, the Gentiles coming, receiving, and obeying the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Now read Revelation chapter 5 verses 10 through 14. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Look at verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Now we know that the literal sea creatures, such as fish, etc., are not going to bless, honor, and glorify the Lord. We see here another use of the word sea to denote people. Now notice Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. He saw a beast rise up out of the sea, 
had seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. Now this obviously was not some sci-fi dragon type creature rising up out of the sea. This creature rising up out of the sea symbolized the Gentile nations. Again, we see the word sea being used here to denote people, more specifically the Gentiles. In Revelation chapter 17 verse 8 through 18 is the explanation of the beast that was described in Revelation 13 and 1. Notice in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15 what the scripture said. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Again, the waters that is used here denotes people and nations. By the way, the, the horde that was described in Revelation, Babylon, that was Old Covenant Israel, who had rejected God, broke His covenant, martyred many of the prophets He had sent to them, and now had crucified Jesus. We have a Bible study on who is this Babylon that we will be presenting on our YouTube channel shortly. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, we have another reference to the word waters. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as a voice of many waters, and as a voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Again, we have the use of the word waters, denoting people rejoicing and praising God. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, 28, and 29, the Bible says this, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. These scriptures in Galatians clearly tells us that in the new covenant, which is the new heaven and the new earth, there is no longer any division or distinction be made between people. For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Notice in Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, what the scriptures say. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In Colossians, we are reading about the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now was made manifest to the saints. That is, that God would make himself known to the Gentiles. Notice Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, what the Bible says. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. These scriptures in Romans tells us that this gospel is now has been made known unto all nations, this mystery. The word Gentiles means nations or all other non-Jewish nations. Today in the eyes of God we either have believers or unbelievers. 
Now let's go to the verse found in Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This verse clearly tells us that in the new heaven and in the new earth, there is no more sea. From all of the previous cited verses, we can see how the word sea and waters that was used in context in these verses is referring to Gentiles. Remember, this gospel has been made available to whosoever will receive it and thus obey it. The middle wall of partition, that which separated Jew from Gentile, the law, has now been torn down. Notice Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14, 15, and 16. For he is our peace, who hath made one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. We have a whole Bible study on our YouTube channel titled, Has the Time of the Gentiles Been Fulfilled? This study goes into great detail about this whole concept. Another way to think about the statement, no more see, is the fact that there are no more boundaries. In the natural world, rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, all form boundaries. They separate bodies of land from each other. If you took out all the bodies of water, there would be no separation between land masses. The parallel holds true spiritually. In conclusion, in the eyes of God, there is no longer Jew or Gentile. The time of the Gentiles has been completely fulfilled. In the new heaven and in the new earth which we live today, there are no more barriers or boundaries. There is no more sea. Today, in the eyes of God, there are only two kinds of people, believers and unbelievers. As stated in Revelation 22:17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This concludes our study titled, No More Sea. If you have any comment, or if you have any input, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you enjoy the content on our channel, make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell icon for notification when we upload new videos. At the bottom of your screen, you'll find a alphabetical index of all of our Bible studies on our YouTube channel. God bless you and thanks so much. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.